Welcome to the Streams and Flooding Lab. This week, our activities, content, and assignments will help you be able to do the following. One, recognize stream characteristics and features such as meanders, point bars, cut banks, deltas, and oxbow lakes. Two, to explore how streams change shape and alter the landscape by examining the effects of factors such as gradients, channel size, and velocity. Three, investigate floods and recognize floodplain features. First, we'll start with some background information to provide you context for this week's lab. The water cycle, also known as the hydrologic cycle, is the continuous movement of water on, above, and below the surface of Earth. This cycle is essential for sustaining life on our planet, influencing weather patterns, climate, and the overall environment. Understanding the water cycle is fundamental in earth sciences and is crucial for the study of streams, flooding, and water resource management. Powered by solar energy, the cycle starts with the sun heating earth's surface, prompting the evaporation of water from oceans, rivers, and lakes. Plants also play a role through transpiration, adding moisture to the air. As the water vapor rises, it cools and condenses to form clouds, which, when heavy enough, release precipitation in various forms such as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Upon reaching Earth's surface, this water can take multiple paths. It can seep into the soil, replenishing groundwater and aquifers, or traverse the land as surface runoff, eventually rejoining rivers and streams to start the cycle anew. Each phase of this cycle is vital, not only for ecosystem sustenance, but also for climate regulation and shaping geological landscapes. While approximately 71% of Earth's surface is enveloped by water, the vast majority is saline ocean water. Freshwater constitutes only about 2.5% of Earth's water, with a significant portion trapped in glaciers, ice caps, and inaccessible underground aquifers. Specifically, of that 2.5%, 68.7% is ice, 30.1% is stored as groundwater, and only 1.2% is readily available to us as surface water. This fresh water is not evenly distributed across the planet, leading to water stress in densely populated or arid regions where demand outstrips supply. The scarcity of fresh water is aggravated by climate change, which shifts precipitation patterns and human activities that result in inefficient water use and contamination. As populations grow and living standards improve, the demand for fresh water rises, further straining limited resources. The consequences of freshwater scarcity are profound, affecting ecosystems, human health, food security, and potentially leading to conflict and migration as communities seek reliable water sources. Because of this, it's important that we understand how to preserve our surface water for ourselves and for the ecosystems that rely on them. Rivers and streams have been shaping our world for millions of years. To understand how streams affect Earth, we must be able to recognize stream characteristics and their features. A stream is defined as any water flowing through a channel of any size. Streams have created famous topographical features such as the Grand Canyon in Arizona and the Mississippi River Delta south of New Orleans, Louisiana. Streams shape these natural features through the processes of erosion and deposition. One type of stream, as shown in this image, is known as a meandering stream. Meandering streams are characterized by their winding, sinuous paths, which contrast sharply with the more direct routes of straight or braided streams. Three key measurements that Earth scientists use to describe rivers and streams are discharge, velocity, and gradient. Discharge is the volume of water that flows through a river channel or stream at a given location within a set period of time. Velocity is the speed at which water in a stream or other body of water moves in a particular direction. And gradient is the slope or the steepness of a stream channel, typically measured as the vertical drop of a stream over a specified horizontal distance, or the rise over the run. The stream that we discussed earlier, the meandering stream, can be characterized in several different landforms. We'll use this figure to discuss key features of meandering streams. The head of a stream is the source of flowing water, 
often found in high places such as mountains or hills where water accumulates from precipitation or springs. The mouth of a stream is where the stream ends, which can be either into a larger stream or into a larger body of water such as an ocean. A meander is a bend or a curve in the stream. The cut bank is the outside edge of a meander where stream velocity is high and erosion occurs. The point bar is the inside edge of a meander where stream velocity is low and deposition occurs. An oxbow lake is a meander that has been cut off from the stream pathway after deposition and erosion and creates a new stream channel. Finally, a delta is a landform created by the deposition of sediment that is carried by a river as the flow leaves its mouth and enters the slower moving or stagnant water. This entire area is surrounded, um, this entire area surrounding the meandering stream is known as the floodplain. To get a better look at the floodplain, we'll zoom in on a section of the stream. Like we mentioned on the last slide, floodplains are flat expanses of land adjacent to rivers and streams that are prone to flooding. Floodplains are formed over time as rivers overflow their banks, depositing sediment and gradually creating a flat, often fertile area. The deposition of nutrient-rich sediments makes these areas highly productive for agriculture. Floodplains provide diverse habitats for various species and act as natural filters, improving water quality by trapping pollutants. They also serve as natural buffers, absorbing excess water during floods and thereby reducing the impact of high water levels downstream. Understanding the dynamics of floodplains is vital for effective river management, flood risk assessment, and conservation efforts. This knowledge is particularly important in the context of climate change, which is expected to alter precipitation patterns and potentially increase the frequency and severity of flooding events. Meandering streams continuously move and change shape within the floodplain. These panels represent a time series of meandering stream development. The black arrows indicate where the water is flowing the fastest. In the first panel, we see cut banks beginning to form as the fast flowing water chips away at the stream bank. In areas where water is flowing the slowest, sediment falls out of suspension and is deposited forming point bars. As the water continues flowing, the curves of this stream become more exaggerated until they form a nearly closed loop. Eventually, the meander neck will close and the meander becomes cut off from the stream. This is known as an oxbow lake. Because oxbow lakes have been cut off from their flowing water supply, these lakes will eventually evaporate and or become filled in with sediments. This animated image shows changes to Peru's Ucayali River from 1985 to 2013. This GIF was created by sedimentary biologist Zoltan Sylvester with Landsat images and data from NASA and the United States Geological Survey. Sediment transport is a key process that involves the movement of materials of various sizes and types. This transport occurs in three primary forms, dissolved load, suspended load, and bed load. The dissolved load consists of mineral ions that have been chemically weathered from the rock and soil and are carried in the water itself, invisible to the naked eye. These ions are essential for the chemical composition of the stream and its ecological health. The suspended load is made up of fine particles such as silt and clay that are light enough to be held aloft by the turbulence of the water column as the stream flows. These particles can be carried for long distances and are the main contributors of the stream's turbidity. Finally, the bed load is composed of larger, heavier particles like sand, gravel, and pebbles that are not fully suspended but are pushed, rolled, or bounced along the bottom of the stream bed. This movement is more pronounced during high flow conditions when the water has the energy to mobilize these larger particles. Studying and understanding streams, it's also important to remember that faster water can carry more and larger particles. The volume of water passing through a river channel influences its capacity to transport sediment. The amount of sediment available for transport depends on the erosion rates in the watershed and the stream's ability to entrain or pick up sediment. 
The geometry of a stream channel affects flow patterns and sediment transport dynamics. Plants can also stabilize soils and reduce the availability of sediments for transport. Studying and understanding streams is important largely because of flooding. Flooding occurs when there is more water in the stream channel than the channel can hold, known as the flood stage. However, flood stage is only determined by its impacts on humans and infrastructure, not on the surrounding topography where the general population does not reside. Flooding to a large extent, flooding to a large enough extreme can be devastating to the local area. Floods can ruin houses, wash away roads and bridges, and affect the drinking water supply. In the United States alone, floods cause on average 82 deaths each year and almost $4 billion in property damage. When flooding occurs, you can have rapidly moving runoff and overflow from the stream. Because of climate change, flooding events have increased on all continents over the last century. Because floods are increasing in both frequency and severity because of climate change, it's important to know general areas of high flood risk in the U.S. This map shows areas in the continental U.S. that have spent the most money on flood damages in the last 15 years. The darker the blue, the more money that's been spent. As you can see, areas of special concern include coastal areas, particularly the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, and along floodplains of streams and rivers, particularly those that have been engineered to restrict the width of the channel flow. To mitigate floods, engineers have developed structures such as flood walls, dams, dikes, and levees. By collecting data such as the stream discharge and velocity that we discussed previously, scientists can create rating curves to predict how high the flood waters will reach and predict how often floods of certain magnitudes will occur. Understanding the stream systems can lead to better preparedness for future flooding events. Next, we'll discuss information that you'll need to complete this lab. After handling lab supplies, particularly the stream table itself, wash your hands with soap and water. When lifting the stream table or the cement block, make sure you're using both hands and multiple table mates and or the help of your TA. Make sure you keep track of your units and pay attention to the units on the quiz questions. There are many physical supplies for this lab, including the stream table, cement block, meter stick, solo cup, string, model houses, pitcher, five gallon bucket of water, stopwatch, toothpicks, and paint stirring, sticks, paint stirring sticks. The worksheets and procedure will be available for download in the instruction page in this week's Carmen module. This figure is also in the procedure document, but it shows the general setup of the experiment and will be on the screen for the majority of the lab.